Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the updates to the patch 6.3 special site. This is where we get new glimpses at maybe images of some bosses or some story moments, descriptions of the content or the lore behind it, and then sometimes some pictures of like gear or something like that. But you know what? We're waiting on the prelim patch notes. Those will be here tomorrow. We will do a video on that. So I figure might as well kill some time and check out the updates to the site. I'll include a link in the description. They do these for all the major patches. So if you're newer to the game, if you follow the lodestone, you can usually find these as soon as they are posted, as long as you check there occasionally. Now we already made a video on some of this stuff. So we have the MSQ stuff. We get to see Julius. We know that we're gonna be going up into, you know, uh, Garlemald and our search for his Daya. It's gonna be a part of it. So our first new section here appears to be the Myths of the Realm Part Two, just a brief description and some screenshots that looks like we've seen before. We've of course have Graha with his ridiculous looking backpack, which for me just, it sends off anyone getting like Bioshock infinite vibes from that thing. We have a picture of Helone here, who we got to see in the most recent trailer. And going on to image number four, we get a look at the armor set. We have to look at most of this during the letter from the producer live, if memory serves. Really like the shoulders in particular on some of the armor sets. You know, one sol uh, shoulder has the draped cloth and the other one has these like crystals pointing out the side. So I'm a big fan of that. But other than that, it's not too exciting. I think it'll be a pass for quite a few people, but it's okay as far as I'm concerned. As for the description we have here, the 12 Eorzea's guardian deities seek to fulfill their enigmatic aspirations, and for this they claim they must engage in battle with men. Continuing your efforts to uncover the truth, you and your comrades set forth once more for their heavenly abode in the Phantom Realm. So yeah, you know, they're still just playing around with us right now. You know, we don't think there's any stakes higher than that. We've been told it's going to have still a very jovial feeling and not something all that serious, but I just wonder if we're ever going to move to something more serious or if it is just going to be fun loving if it is fun loving you know the first entry was really good i just wonder if it's going to evolve more meaningfully and not just be lore i suppose be more of its own story uh, we already had this dungeon one from the last time we looked at it the trial we don't know who it is it's probably cagnazzo or rubicante but we don't know for certain one big tell that it's i mean it's one of them uh, one of the voice lines in the trailer is a line that Cagnazzo, I believe, says in Final Fantasy IV. And so, while well, it doesn't mean he's the fight, you know, we just got to look for those little tidbits. In the 6.2 trailer, uh, one of the lines that Astinian says is a line from Final Fantasy IV, said by Kane. So, I should have seen it coming that it was going to be Barbariccia, and I didn't, so I'm just keeping those things in mind. We have the Omega Protocol. That's the new Ultimate. That'll be coming out January 24th, two weeks after patch 6.3. And yes, I will be live streaming our our hardcore prog. We are going extra hard this time with the group that I am in. So expect a lot of kind of spammed video updates as we clear through phases, as we kind of reach our enrage point for the day, just regular updates onto my progression. So that's gonna be all over the YouTube channel. Eureka Orthros, very excited about this. This is our new deep dungeon. This should be sometime in March because it's patch 6.35, normally about eight weeks after the patch is done. We only have this one image, unfortunately. But for the description, in the late third astral era, when the ancient Allegan Empire was at the zenith of its glory, researchers toiled deep under the crystal tower to uncover secrets which might uplift their motherland to even greater heights. Their laboratory was dubbed Eureka Orthros, where impossible concepts of immortality, cloning, and dominion over the divine were made reality. So fantastic was this research that the legend of Eureka has endured through the ages, and it now falls to the star's foremost adventurer to bring the laboratory's buried secrets into the light of day. So this is actually in line with our understanding of what Eureka was prior to this. Remember that Eureka is not the actual name of the chain of islands that the Isle of Val became. It was a name that they gave to those islands because of their legends in relation to the Alagon Empire. So this is just bringing it in line. That always left the door open. This is something going to be under the Crystal Tower. I've been waiting for a long time. And just so you know, it doesn't look like it's anything like Final Fantasy III's Eureka. No, I think uh, the actual Isle of Val Eureka hit the nail on the head with the weapons and whatnot, but we'll see. Curious to see how these end up uh, panning out. I'm excited. We're, I'm going to be doing, uh, not world prog, I'm going to be trying to solo Eureka Orthros when it comes out. I'll probably do it with a group for a little bit, then get to soloing. I'm not competing for any sort of placement. I just 
plan to do it solo. And we'll probably do some solo like Palace or Heaven on High before that as well. Uh, Unreal, I'm actually planning on maybe releasing a video with an update on Sophia. Um, my old guide is actually largely relevant for her still, but there's like bits and pieces that can make it easier. You know, we have knockback resist now. Um, we have a better understanding of the game. We have more gap closers. So I wanna update, I wanna add like an addendum, but it feels like I'm not saying enough because I'm just like expecting people to have watched the other video, but I don't wanna say too much because I expect people have watched the other video. So I've been struggling a little bit with that one just because I, I can't get the length down right. But yeah, Unreal, again, I'm curious to see what the new reward is because got to sell that for some money. Got to buy those gold mounts that we're getting as well. Tataru's Grand Endeavor, we know we're getting a pretty cool glam from this, but this was here the last time we took a look at it. Somehow further, Hildebrand Adventures. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be a character we already know. That's not who I think it is. Pretty sure that's Godbert. You can see the like white hair underneath the straw hat right here. So I think this is just Godbert in a, in a fancy getup. But uh, if not, then, you know, curious to see. After enduring a series of surreal misadventures on the moon, Inspector Hildebrand has made it back to the star's surface. He and his eclectic crew launch themselves directly into the search for Master Poopoo's missing companion, an endeavor which attracts the attention of old acquaintances, both affable and aggravating. So, I have the theory that because Endwalker is supposed to be about tying up loose ends, not that we'll see the end of Hildebrand forever, but that I expect to see most characters from previous outings. And having an affable and aggravating one could leave open both, uh, what's his face from A Realm Reborn? Oh, it was just on the tip of my tongue. Briarden, I believe it was. Uh, he, I definitely expect to reappear at some point, but it leaves open a few things, and I really hope we revisit the Gigi storyline at some point during all of this. Either way, looking forward to it. You will have to do this for the part that comes below it. And that's an image. <laughs> that is an image. It seems somebody else is trying to perfect the whole uh, sweat part of our weapon. Uh, so, weapon enhancement quest, Mandrival weapon, also patch 6.35, again, these are probably about in March. Uh, Lord Godbert has been diligently deciphering his ancestor's manual in a bid to recreate the magnificent Mandrival weaponry. Though stymied by cryptic code for quite some time, the key to advancing the augmentation process is finally in his well-manicured hands. The first weapon looked great for almost every job. Really hoping that A, this is a glow to it, but B, if we see a new model, which is also very likely, that it's also good looking. I know a lot of people are kind of uh, concerned about this weapon because, you know, we don't have an exploration zone. It's, it's Hildebrand slash Godbird or it's Manderville stuff, so people think it's going to be a joke. But the first step proved they have some serious, serious designs in mind. And I think the story for it should also be informing people that these aren't going to be joke weapons. And I think they may have deliberately written the story for this in such a way that eliminates that thought from people's minds. And it did a good job. More exciting to me, and I, here's the thing, I'm not even going to do this quest line, the tool enhancement quest. I'm only excited because our boy here, um, Granolt, I believe his name was, um, he felt kind of wasted in Shadowbringers. He's basically the first version of, of Geralt, and he just sits in the bottom of the Tempest. Yes, you need to use him in order to obtain, you know, your, your artifact weaponry and, and the base weapon and all that, but I thought he was for sure going to be involved in the Shadowbringers Relic in some way, or they were going to use him for something, and they never did. So I was kind of disappointed. The fact that he's coming back in the craftings and gathering, the new crafting and gathering tools quest is, you know, a little bittersweet, but I'm so glad to see it. So, you know, awesome. Also, I can't help but notice um, his helper is, uh, I hadn't noticed this before, looks kind of familiar. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh... No, you're unable to not see that, uh, you know, the Derplander slash Ardbert slash Meteor slash Hiroshi is uh, his assistant, because uh, I sure did. Emerging from a hermit-like existence at the bottom of the Tempest, a legendary craftsman makes his triumphant return home. The Crystalline Mean provides the stage for the new saga of splendid tools and ardent artisans. Then we have the Loperate Tribal Quest. This is an image we've already seen. With the moon no longer needed for interstellar evacuation, myriad tiny voices cry out for new purpose. Fortunately for the erstwhile starship crew, their own dreaming way has little, no little experience in fretting over such matters and is determined to help each and every Loperate find its way. 
And that's pretty much what I expected was going to happen. Um, I think they really need to be taught to make less carrots or cloth or anything. So I hope that's what we're helping them with because otherwise we really don't need to be helping them make things if they, given what the Loprits can do. Anden, we have a description for Anden. So this is our new custom delivery. Big surprise because we, we've never really done much with the Leafman over in Leader Loran. So uh, I'm very curious to see our revisit to Ilmeg. Uh, in the flowering fields of Ilmeg stand the Leafmen, erstwhile mortals who now spend their days as topiary bushes generally do, in quiet contemplation. However, Lita Laron's status quo is shaken to its roots when the Pixies discover a highly irregular shrubbery in their midst. Aotir is quick to identify him as Andin, but who is this lump of leaves anyway, and why won't he stop talking? So Andin used to be in charge, he used to be a shepherd. And now the pixies look after all of his uh, all of his stock, but that's all we've ever really known about him. So I'm curious what they're going to do with this, uh, not to make it compelling, but to make it uh, into why this was their choice. Like why did they decide this NPC needed to be their choice? I hope I'll sort of understand that when the time comes at the end of it all. Uh, Shifting Gymnasium Agonon, this was here last time, so we got to see the pictures. I might do some more maps, you know, with, with the new Gill Mounts coming out, I'm kind of tempted, but I haven't had any good luck this expansion. Like, my luck on maps has been worse than ever, so I felt kind of demotivated for it. Island Sanctuary update, we also covered this last time. You know, there's going to be a bunch of new stuff and quality of life updates, but this, this isn't anything too substantial, given what they've described. Like, yeah, I'll catch a few new monsters, uh, I'll have to, you know, earn those new Sanctuary ranks, but the point four patch is supposed to be a massive update for Island Sanctuary. According to them and their, uh, their roadmap that we got back January last year, um, it should be a whole new island in point four, but... I'm obviously looking for something that's a little more engaging, and it's supposed to be casual, you know, life sim, you know, manage your island, chill on your island kind of style. But even then, uh, it was very rudimentary. You know, it was it was only enjoyable kind of on a surface level, and I never felt compelled to visit it all that often. So looking towards this, maybe reinvigorating that for a short time, but more importantly, what they'll do in point four. The new Crystalline Conflict Arena, looking forward to this. I didn't really PvP the last series, so I didn't even get the, the mount, but... All the same, this map I thought looks incredible. Uh, much more fun for the average player, but I'm concerned about its, uh, I guess, gimmicks in competitive. But that doesn't matter that much. What matters most is that people are having fun with it. But I, I do have to consider both ends. New Leap of Faith course. I'm surprised Yoshi P didn't delete this after what happened to him during the Letter from the Producer Live. I love the Leap of Faith courses. I'm actually probably short MGP for the Blackjack mount that we're going to be getting. Uh, that's assuming it's 2 million MGP. I feel like it's going to be 2 million, and I know I don't have that much. So, uh, you know, I'll be doing this course a lot as a result of that. From the depths of the Black Shroud comes a lofty challenge to those who would reach the heights of athleticism. Don't know why I couldn't say that. Will you be the first walking one to ascend as sprightly as a sylph? I won't be the first, but I'll be one of them. Duty support, this was here last time. You know, the housing update, there's a bunch of new wards being added. And then new items, you know, we get to see that. There's the Blackjack mount right here. Yeah, a lot of people are like, another airship! Little did they know, that's one of the most iconic airships in the game, Final Fantasy VI. Uh, and then if we have the, the, the... I don't know why it's an elephant. I still don't know why it's an elephant. But yeah, you have the, the Lopret tribal quest. I, I mean, there's another Lopret minion, but maybe it's not from this. Maybe it's from something else. Maybe it's from, like, maps or, or Unreal. But there is another... There's the, the, the bunny robots from... Uh, from the level 90 dungeon. What is it called? Da, 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 da. I remember the theme. I can't remember the name. I haven't done a dungeon in, in quite some time. The Corgan minion, which does indeed sploot, and then the near minion that they're adding, uh, I guess just as an honor, as to honor the collaboration they're doing with the mobile game at the moment. But other than that, it looks like we are all good. Of course, if you do ever just want the various images and whatnot, the media page usually has all the renders and links that you can find. Sometimes stuff they don't even really display on the other page. Page. But that is the update to the patch 6.3 special site. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned with 6.3 around the corner. We got plenty of stuff hitting the channel this January. Anyway, with that, I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care. <laughs>